David, you could also start the car without the keys, figure out the car's location and whether the driver was inside or not. Talk to us about how you stumbled upon this flaw. How did you realize you could hack a Tesla? Well, it's quite an interesting story and it started last year actually. So I was just, um, I was in the process of doing a security audit for a French company and I just took a peek look at the infrastructure. I didn't even start a security audit yet, just wanted to take a quick look at the infrastructure to figure out what services they use. And I thought maybe I would find something really quick beforehand. And that's when I discovered the third party software in question. And that's where I discovered that uh, the third party software in its default configuration um, is insecure and allows me through a vulnerability to get access to the API key um, of the person using um, the third party software. And the API key, the Tesla API key uh, is like um, a digital car key basically that also allows for remote control functionality. Um, you already mentioned um, opening windows and doors, um, unlocking the car, um, seeing where the car is, um, starting um, keyless driving. So someone with um, malicious intent even could have um, taken the car for a road trip, going there, turning off the security mode, unlocking the door, starting keyless driving and taking the Tesla for a road trip. And yeah, so that was basically when I discovered this and then um, uh, on the 10th of January, uh, a random thought crossed my mind, like if the default configuration of this third party software is insecure, um, what if there are more people uh, out there using it? So I ran an internet wide search for um, those instances and I found numerous um, Teslas and there were Teslas in California, in, um, in Germany, all around the world in 13 countries actually. And wow. I really wanted to report this um, to the owners to get it fixed because in my opinion this is a huge issue if someone can take your your car for a road trip now we have reached out to tesla for comment but haven't gotten anything publicly or heard from the company publicly we do know that they have a bug bounty program what kind of conversations have you had with tesla have you spoken to elon musk <laughs> i have not i have not spoken to elon musk uh, yet um, but i have spoken to the awesome tesla security team because after my tweet, the Tesla security team reached out to me and I've gotten in contact with them. And they were very helpful. They uh, understood the issue. I sent them my write-up um, privately so they can get an overview of the um, full situation. And they responded very quickly. They revoked access. Um, they revoked the um, access tokens that were exposed to the internet. And they also notified the um, affected Tesla owners using email and push notification. So I'm very glad the Tesla security team helped here to notify all the affected owners to get this resolved as quick as possible. Right, so M points out, David, that you know Tesla haven't talked about your activities publicly. You're in touch with Tesla. We do know that Tesla has a policy, right, when it comes to the cybersecurity community. In fact, let's bring that up and take a look at it. Tesla basically saying that they work with the cybersecurity community, right? When a flaw is identified, when a flaw is brought to their attention, you know, we're committed to working with this community to verify, reproduce, respond to legitimate reported vulnerabilities. So talk to us about the kinds of communications you're having with Tesla. What is it that you're helping them with? And are they giving you any reward for flagging this to them? So a very great question. So the process was pretty much, I sent them all the information and they started investigating this issue uh, on their side uh, to figure out how it affects this uh, or how they can help uh, the security researcher here. And then they very quickly um, responded uh, saying they acknowledged the issue and then took action very quick. But I do not get a bounty from, from Tesla for, for this whole thing because it is uh, indeed a vulnerability in the third party software and not uh, directly in Tesla's code or uh, the, the car software itself. But in, in the process, um, I also uh, found another minor flaw uh, affecting Tesla's API directly. Uh, I also disclosed this to Tesla and this vulnerability, um, the minor second one I found is indeed eligible for, for bounty, but I haven't got a response from Tesla yet how much the bounty will be. Uh, but I hope it pays for, for all the coffee from the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, we hope that for you as well. Well, OK, so there's two separate things there, a, 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 a fault in the API that you found yourself. But the original hijack, that was a third party, right? An issue or a flaw with a third party. Can you explain that distinction to, to us? Why it's in, you, you were really stressing this on Twitter, right? That this was something going through a third party, not Tesla's security infrastructure itself. 
Exactly. So there's um, a very important uh, difference between those because one time Tesla, the company, uh, is responsible. And with the third-party software, it is an open source software um, that is on, on GitHub and it's um, maintained by, by cool people. And it, it's a difference uh, if you find a vulnerability in a third-party software, uh, an open source third-party software, um, then to find a vulnerability in Tesla's infrastructure directly. And um, unfortunately, uh, a few media uh, articles uh, claim that I hacked Tesla directly, and that is just not true because the vulnerability that allowed me to get this kind of access was in the third-party software. So I really stressed on Twitter uh, that it is indeed uh, caused by a third-party software and the owners using the third-party software and not by Tesla as a company. Although Tesla as a company could have done steps that would have prevented me from, in the end, being able to control certain features of a Tesla, but um, in general, Tesla security is great, and I really had to point out that I did not hack Tesla's infrastructure uh, itself. So, David, you know, here's the concern. If this kind of flaw exists, could there be other flaws? Are you concerned about that, that Tesla's could be hacked in other ways? That is definitely a, a very important issue also going forward into the future when cars uh, get connected to the Internet more, uh, cars get connected to each other. And cybersecurity is a very important topic we have to take a look at if we are going to digitalize and connect those cars. And there have been ways to hack Teslas in the past, and I think there will be hacks in the future which affect Teslas and other um, digitalized uh, cars. So we as um, a cybersecurity community, as the company is producing those cars and the owners um, of those cars, we all have to work together to, to mitigate this um, and to make sure it's very secure. That is very important going forward. So, you know, what's the concern here? I mean, I know initially you were talking about two dozen cars, but how big could some of these potential problems be? I mean, is this something that could affect an entire fleet? Well, there's a difference between third-party software and Tesla again. If there is a hack in Tesla's infrastructure, then this definitely can affect uh, the full fleet. And there uh, has been a report, I think, like five years ago, or something like that, where a security researcher uh, was able to indeed take over the full fleet. But since then, the security on Tesla's side has improved massively. So, um, but this definitely is a concern that also the full fleet could be, um, could be affected by a vulnerability. So that's why it's very important um, to, to make sure it's, it's secure or as secure as possible. David, just really quick, run us through the basics on that second API floor you discovered with Tesla, the specific one that you hope pays for your coffee. And secondly, <laughs> you're a young man, 19 years old. What happens next for you? So um, the two questions, I will answer the, um, the first one first. So um, the second vulnerability was very interesting because um, I, when discovering the, um, the issue with the um, Teslas that I could uh, control certain features of, I had no way to um, notify the owners. And I really wanted a way to notify the owners. And on Twitter, someone pointed out that, uh, pointed out that there is um, an API endpoint um, where I could query the, uh, the email address um, of the Tesla owner. And then I went on, uh, on the search to, to figure out what API point this is, because Tesla's API is not documented. So I had to um, search through a few things uh, for, to, to figure out that endpoint. And once I was able to, to figure out that endpoint, I was indeed able to query the email address associated with the Tesla API key, the digital car key. And then I noticed that I was able to query the email address of the Tesla owner using a token, an access token that was already revoked by the Tesla security team. And that's uh, what I reported to them. They, rolled, uh, they already rolled out a fix into production to, to fix this because you shouldn't be able to uh, query sensitive information like an email address using an access that is already uh, expired or revoked.